Hello everybody and welcome to Project Shadow. My name is Charlie and you may know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset. And uh, I'd like to say I'm sorry about yesterday's podcast. It was uh, short <laughs> and to the point. Yeah. For those of you who have followed me for some time, you know that uh, I have some issues sometimes with uh, going to dark places and yesterday was half that and half really focused on doing some art for the website and I'm happy to say that I got the art done. It's not up yet because there's a story thing that I want to write to go with it and I'm working on that right now. But uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, today I'm going to try to do some more, but I'm, I'm still in kind of that funk. It's not a bad funk. Like, I don't know how many have ever experienced, you know, depression before, depressive episodes before. This, this isn't a bad funk. I mean, the world is still colorful, you know. I still have the ability to feel other emotions. The Dementors have not entered the room. Expecto Patronum is working. Oddly enough, today my Patronum is brought to you by Andrew Elbrick from the Sisters of Mercy, which is a very strange place to go to. But hey, if it works, do it. But there's a lot going on behind the scenes right now that I wish I could share, but I don't like sharing too much until things come out in case things get changed. Um, but yeah. So sorry about yesterday's episode, and hopefully today will be a lot better because I actually have a few things that I want to talk about, and they're not all happy, but they're things that need saying. So today we got the news that Chester from Lincoln Park is dead of an apparent suicide and I am not dealing the best with that um, I'm you know just to be straight up honest you know, I've never been the biggest Linkin Park fan like I really really liked hybrid theory I really liked Meteora and not really because of the music or anything I just kind of lost track with them after that and Unfortunately, my only experience with the band was really some uh, pop-ups that they made in music or when a friend was like, you really have to hear this song. And, you know, it's not that I was a huge, huge fan, but he... This is one of those things where somebody else's death makes you very selfish. And I hate that. I really, really hate that when that happens. Um, he was 41. And I will be 41 in November. And that fact, more than anything, has really stuck out to me in the story. Because I've, as I said in a previous segment, and if you followed me for any period of time, you know, I've struggled with depression for years. And seeing someone my age fall victim to this thing that I've struggled against since I was in my teens is hard. You know, I, I, I didn't know him. The only connection I had to him was through his music. In fact, I I had... I had felt like it was time to check them out again. They had done some interviews on the Genius YouTube channel that looked really interesting and kind of made me want to check out the new, you know, latest music. But I hadn't gotten around to it. It, It's a horrible time in the news where you see yourself and you don't like what you saw you know I I don't know what was going on in his life and I don't want to comment on what was going on in his life but I 
I understand the dark places that I've gotten to in my own. And a friend of mine on Facebook said that there was some th thoughts that this had to do with Chris Cornell because they were close friends and this was his birthday. And Chris Cornell's death hit me really hard like this too because sometimes it's hard to hold on but the struggle is worth it the struggle matters it's not always easy and I'm not judging him or anything or Chris Cornell or anyone who falls victim to that demon that haunts your mind sometimes but the struggle is important you know I have so many friends that I would not have had if I had fallen victim earlier in life I've had so many experiences, so many wonderful, wondrous experiences that I would not have had if I had fallen victim earlier in life. And for me, that's what you have to do to keep yourself going, is focus on the impermanence of all things. Sorrow passes. The dark times pass. The bad feelings pass. They do. The good times pass. Everything comes and goes. But that's the beauty and the wonder of life. That is the very thing that keeps me going even when I don't know how to keep going. And I wish so much that Chester would have been able to find that. R.I.P. Chester. You'll be missed. If you didn't pick up on it from my uh, dedication of Monday's show to Nawaz, yeah, I, I really like defiant music. I really like music that stands up and kind of shouts at the world I'm here. And this is why days like today. And so for some reason, what feels right today is to put on some Sisters of Mercy and just rock out to it. I don't know if you're familiar with the band, if you're listening live on the FM at the uh, Anchor channel, which is at anchor.fm slash Project Shadow. You can hook up to the podcast there. You can also download the Anchor app there, follow Project Shadow, and then when I say live, it's not really live. It's for 24 hours after the segments are recorded, they're available, so you can listen in the morning and in the evening and you will get more than is included on the podcast. So definitely check that out if you want to follow everything that's going on over here. Especially when I talk about music, I very often will play songs from that artist. And so when you download the Anchor app, and this isn't available on the web, it's not available on the podcast, but when you download the Anchor app, you connect either your Apple Music account or your Spotify account, and then you can listen to full versions of all the songs. You can skip ahead if you don't like the song that's currently on, call in, make requests, all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, today is going to be about the Sisters of Mercy because they, their music to me is the music of the crumbling world, the world that is falling down, that has fallen down, but that defiant... Just because you fell down doesn't mean you knocked me down with you. And I like music like that. It really empowers me and gives me the oomph to get going. They're one of my favorite bands. And there's something about Andrew's voice that one I enjoy listening to and I enjoy singing along with it because it's actually in my vocal register. And I say and a lot. But, yeah, so today for me is going to be a Sisters of Mercy Day. Probably a couple other bands 
thrown in there for good measure. What do you like to listen to when you need to step up and go boom? You've got a lot of stuff that you need to get done. I'd love to know. Again, through the Anchor app, go to our profile page, click call in, leave a one minute comment, and I'll hear it. It might even end up on the show. But I would love to hear from you and know how everything's going. Let's go to the Temple of Love. That sounds like a good place to start today. There's a song by the Sisters of Mercy called Under the Gun that has been one of those motivational songs for me for, oh, it seems like forever now. (laughs) I don't even remember how long ago it was the first time I ever heard it. And the chorus of the song is, Are You Living for Love? And listening to her sing that over and over and over again. That is the real question. Especially on days like today. Are you living for love? Are you living for love? Are you living for love? When the road gets too tough, is your love strong enough? Are you living for love? And yes, my love is strong enough. My love with my friends, my love with my family, my love with my husband. And I think I'm finally at a point where I can say my love for myself, which to be honest is a phrase that I never, ever thought I would be able to say. Never. Like that's not something that would have been in my lexicon five years ago, but through a lot of hard work and effort, I I think I can say that now. Yes, my love is strong enough. When the road gets too tough, I am living for love. And I think that's really all, at least for me, that's all that matters. You know, I love my work, I love my friends, I love my family, I love my husband. I love my doggy who's sitting, staring at me right now, wondering why I'm talking into the room. That love is what sustains us. It's what gives us hope. I love so much. And that's where I get myself into trouble sometimes. It seems like every month or so I talk to a friend who, either because of a bad relationship or, God forbid, because some franchise that they follow did something that they didn't enjoy tells me that I just don't think I'm going to love anymore. Especially when it's over the franchise thing, because that franchise don't love you. It's never loved you. (laughs) It's never going to love you. It just loves your money. And yeah, if they stop getting your money, they'll be a little upset. But there are a lot of other people that are giving them the money, unless they really royally mess up, and then maybe eventually they'll turn back around. But you can't stop loving you can't stop taking that risk you can't stop putting yourself out there to live for love because in the end that's all that really matters on the cold days and on the hot days and on the sick days and all the days in between that's what really matters because those are the people that are going to be there for you those are the people that are going to remember Those are the people that are going to carry you on when you can't keep walking. And those are the people you're going to carry when they can't keep walking. And that's really, for me at least, the secret and the key to everything is finding those things, those people. And yes, Sasha, those animals that you can love. And loving them with all of your heart with all of your being and yes sometimes they will disappoint you sometimes they will break your heart sometimes they will abuse that trust and break it but it's better to have that momentary broken heart than the permanently empty one yeah that's what it's all about 